uh, Steve. <laughs> we said it was going to be your biggest and best show of all time, and you can't always guarantee that, but <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Do you know what? It, it, it was absolutely fantastic, and not just as a promoter being there, knowing that you, you've worked together with people to put that on, just as a fan watching it, you know, I spoke to a lot of people after the fight who's coming up to me and saying oh best night of boxing ever seen Steve and you know it makes you feel good yeah so uh, I was both pleased and proud with uh, what we put together on Saturday night. Yeah no it was it was a special night and, and I got the same comments from everyone, everyone I was speaking to and Twitter was just full of it like you say if Carlsberg's did uh, yeah. small old shows <laughs> that would be the one. Um, should we run through it from the beginning? Yeah of course we can yeah. Um, who was first on now? Um, I'm not going to be in order here. I, I, I'll, I'll remember the first first one anyway because uh, we had to change everything around because uh, the second fight, Carl Lamotta, we had to uh, get off because his um, opponent, Jordan Grand, had a train to catch and that was going to be four. So it all got changed around. But um, the, the, the first fight, as we Jack say, was uh, Jack Kilgannon v yeah. Jan Popo. And uh, that was probably one that didn't kind of set the fireworks going but it was a good fight and it was a great learning fight for Jack because he's normally gung-ho and that Sergio Bombo is an handful for anybody he is. very strong good boxer and can punch so I think the tactics to box him and just keep him at range and win clearly on points uh, was not as exciting as you normally see with Jack Kilgannon but it was what he had to do especially with the big fight coming up. I say yeah because he's got the central area fight with uh, John Telford. Wait, 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 it's the 28th of June at Altergum Legends on the undercard to the uh, the cruiserweight uh, ultimate boxer so uh, it was something that he knew about before it was on the back of his mind he had to get through that unscathed and obviously you don't want to catch any of his bombs it, uh, and he threw a few at him but you know it was a good fight but it wasn't great like a lot of the other fights we had on you. Yeah. But he did, he did show a different side so yeah, it was nice to see that he can box. Yeah. Smoothly Listen, well. when you get in big fights, and it could happen with a John Selfers one, when you get inside or the, the kids on top, you've got to have a little bit more to your game. And uh, to be able to jab and move and, and get the breather when you need it is something every fighter's got to do. And uh, he, he did that on um, on Saturday. So in the future, that that would be good to have. So I know he's got it in his locker. And then we had the first outing of the year for uh, Luke Blackledge. I think last time he fought was it on uh, Jolly Boys, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't in that order, but yeah, let's go on about Luke oh, then. Sorry, yeah. I thought it was. He fought, he fought Daryl Daryl Sharp, and uh, for whatever reason, Daryl Sharp was crazy up for this one, and, and he come to get the win, and uh, he thought he got the win. There wasn't much in it, but uh, I think what you you thought or what you saw there was that Luke was the cleaner punches. Um, he got some good punches through Daryl, but he just couldn't sustain his attacks, and uh, I think that was a little difference between the two of them on the night. Yeah. Um, so it's a good win for Luke because Daryl's no pushover and uh, he gets him back down. He weighed 12 stone, didn't he, the day before? Yes. So he's back to super middleweight and a uh, couple more fights like that and then he can go and have another uh, title fight and see, see, see if he's still got it. Plus, it was a big target for uh, Daryl Sharp, former super middleweight Commonwealth champion. It's like it's worth picking your game for that, isn't it? That might be why he had a go, yeah. Yeah. Um, go on then, who was next then? Well, you're, yeah. you're running it there. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Well, I'm going to start yeah. with Let's go with that. It was a cracking fight. Uh, really warm up towards the end as well. Kane Gardner against Ben Fields. Yeah, I mean, um, Kane said it himself in the interview after. It's his first proper fight that, that he's had because he has been on top all the time. Yeah. And he boxed beautifully and... Uh, he mentioned that what he was hoping to do was box uh, for the first three or four, get a, a, a good clear points ahead and then put it on him and try and stop him. But... He did do the first part of the game plan, but the fifth and sixth round, he went the other way. The other kid put him on in there. Ben Fields come out and was throwing hooks, lefts, rights, yes. uh, <laughs> even through the head a few times. And uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, I know he hurt Kane, and uh, Kane, Kane just used those last two rounds to get through. So all, all credit to Ben Fields. He come and had the right go. I'd like to think he'd, he'd have gone like that from the first, and then, then we'd, we'd, we'd see what had happened. But you know, Kane learned a lot from that, and uh, he's eager to, to go and prove that he's better than he's shown on there. And he's going to jump on the uh, 25th of May Hennessy show um, right. at Victoria Warehouse now, yeah. Right. Any opponent yet? No, he's only jumped on today. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> um, Carl Motti against Jordan Grantham. Yeah, he showed all the skills in the world. Jordan Grantham knows 
what he's doing and uh, he gets through these four and six rounders easy and uh, he didn't get through it easy on, on Saturday. I was pleased with the way... 55 fights uh, inside two years. Jordan Grant has never been well, stopped. Unbelievable, <laughs> yeah. Well, Carl never looked like stopping, but he did hurt him a few times with good body shots. So, uh, Carl, Carl Amotti showed that he's, he's a work Plus in Carl's progress in getting better. Well. Yeah, yeah. So, it was a, a good performance. Uh, we spoke about Jack Kilgarry, uh, uh, Wigan's favourite, uh, James Moorcroft. Yeah, fantastic fight, wasn't it? You know, yeah. the other kid flew at him from the start, and he actually caught James with a couple of big overhand rights. But uh, fair credit to him, he, he took him really well, and then he put his own shots together a few times to hurt him, and then uh, he put him over, and then then he finished him. The ref, ref jumped in and stopped it before James was going to uh, put him over that again. Was a good stoppage, right yeah. Hand, yeah, yeah, put his punches together very, very well um, there, and. Uh, you won't believe he, he didn't have that amateur ped pedigree, no. and uh, I think um, we've got a fight, good fight coming up for him soon. Uh, hopefully, we can announce it at the end of this week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Andrew Fleming. He was the one between the two main bouts. Yeah, and um, I put him on there because I expected it to be a bit of a great fight. I mean, it was a good fight, but uh, Troy James didn't bring as much as I thought he would to the party. Um, whether it's because um, Andrew Fleming uh, negated what he was doing, but uh, it, was, it was a comfortable win for Andrew and uh, shows that he, he was ready for that step up and ready to, to, go, to move up again. I think that's the thing that people don't realise, because he... It makes it look so easy. He's fought with it. Bro, he's, he's, I don't think he's in, in his. That was his ninth, eighth fight, was it? Or seventh fight? Seventh, seventh fight. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think anyone's really laid the glove, glove clean. No, like, no, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's got he's got good movement, you know. Uh, as I say, that was a step up for him. He dealt with it handedly, and uh, we'll, we'll step him up again. I, I, I need to look and just see if there's any VIP fighters at that same level that he wants to fight a lightweight. Um, who we can put him in with because you know. the last two rounder and again yeah. I forgot that was his first six rounder mm. as well mm. so first six rounder against uh, you know a guy who's done things that he's, he's still dreaming of and uh, he performed really well taking yeah. that all into consideration yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then we'll, we'll start with Jack Cullen against Jack Sellers because Jack Sellers showed a lot of heart in that fight because yeah, Cullen yeah, was yeah, yeah. You know, so strong Cullen starting to show the promise that we've seen in sparring and he, and he turn, turned it on on the night you know funny enough he was a bit disappointed with his performance and i don't know why because i thought he did everything really really well he looked comfortable he put him over three or four times he was getting his jabs off he he was putting his punches to get together well didn't get it often um but you know even though Jack won an English title the other Jack Jack Sellers needs a load of credit because uh, we know how hard Cullen punches and uh, he stayed in there and uh, he, he went beyond the call, call of duty so when the lads pulled him out in, in the eighth he, you know I mean he was going to carry on uh, he was good corner work and uh, he was never going to win the fight probably could have got hurt in the last two as if or when he tired so uh, good corner work and Jack Cullen English champion and again we're hoping that we can announce a big fight for him at the end of the week yeah yeah yeah, I think that Sellers was very unfortunate to uh, meet uh, Jack Cullen, you know, for the English style. If it would have been anyone else, maybe he'd give him a good go, couldn't he? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, he yeah. was huge. He looked, mm -hmm. they looked like not just one, looked like two weight class differences, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, and you know, considering yeah. Jack Sellers had just won the, the super, super middleweight, middleweight yeah, yeah. you've got to give some credit to him, haven't you? Yeah, and then, and then, I mean, as if all the other fights weren't great, it rounded off with um, Jack Flatley against uh, Craig Morris, which was just well, like Amazing you're saying, all of us were, 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 were good fights, but this topped it, didn't it? I mean, I, I just this stood there the watching it, it, and you know, it, it was hard to watch. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, um, Craig Morris is a nice kid. I come across him when he when he fought Scott Fitzgerald, and he was lucky against Scott. And um, you know, he was taking some stick, and then Jack was taking some stick, and it wasn't like. You know, apart from the first two, which I thought Jack Flatley popped quite smartly, didn't get engaged as much. He certainly got engaged, and, and Craig got engaged, but nothing like the next eight eight rounds, um, which, which were just toe to toe. And you know, really and truly, you, you couldn't split them. You know, what I mean, I was finding it hard to score. I had Jack five four going into the last round, and uh, I give 
I give um, Craig the last round, whatever one said to me, it was the last round on, on their cards that, that really won it for, for Flatley. But um, the judges had him uh, four, four rounds in front, which you know I thought was a bit unjust to the other kid. But I can understand why, because it was rounds you couldn't split. So if they've all gone to Flatley, they've gone to Flatley, because I know what it's like, you don't want to give a 10-10 every round and, and you know what five of those and six of those rounds could have been ten tens it was it was just a, a an absorbing fight and uh, everyone who stayed was just over the moon with what they've seen and as i said to you before i couldn't get out of that venue for people wanting to say well done you put a great show on and and, and that was a great feeling yeah yeah no it was it was a, a special night like I say we picked up two english titles and uh, all the other kids won as well. So yeah, yeah, we, 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 we had a bonus because I kept saying to people, you know, we won't get nine out of nine tonight, but but we did, and we forgot Damien Chambers, haven't we? I know oh, he's not a yeah, VIP yeah. kid, but he had a, a first round knockout a kid who doesn't get get stopped very often and uh, I was just actually saying to someone here I said Damien needs to start hitting him to the body because he's not going to stop him to the head and then boom yeah. just yeah, as yeah. I said it big old arm right spun him round and he turned his back on him and the ref had no, no, no option. Uh, options to stop him but like you say two English titles for VIP we've got one the other week and we've got Reese Mould uh, coming up very shortly so June the 22nd June the 22nd Doncaster tickets are flying out for that one and uh, you know, uh, again, we've got a good good card underneath that one. We've got a good card on June the 8th, so uh, every, everything's rolling in the right way at the moment. One and, thing uh, to mention, that Damien Chambers, you know, that was his fourth stoppage and fourth first round stoppage as well. Right. Right, so obviously, obviously, he can, he, he can, he can whack, yeah. He can. And he's going in the uh, cruiserweight prize fighter. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because I spoke to him about it. So. Yeah, so all in all, a good night and, and, and what I'd like to say is obviously VIP, we invest in those shows, the production we put on the light and, 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 the, and the venues, are, they're all top quality so uh, you know we're doing that and the lads, even though they should be fighting on TV shows because they're good enough, there's just no gaps for them, you know, they're investing in themselves, fighting for small old shows on, for small old money and uh, well done lads, uh, but we'll get to those TV dates whether it's with us or with other people because you deserve it. Thanks for Steve. Thanks Cheers. for me. Thank you. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP Boxing Promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.